Okay, hi. Um, so today, um, as part of the book club working through outstanding user interface with Shiny, we are going to be looking at a way to build an approximation to the Shiny mobile package. So we talked about Shiny mobile a bit last week. Um, this is chapter 23 of the book. Um, uh, if I, I just make that. If I go to, yeah. Uh, so it's this project that we're trying to replicate. Um, a few weeks ago, we used a tool called Sharpont, which is like a way of building, um, um, kind of HTML templates for shiny apps um and yeah we're going to be using it to add some of the basics of of, of the shiny mobile thing um yeah we won't get anywhere near to the features that 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 shiny mobile itself um has though right let's get started though because um so yeah, so we're working through this chapter uh, where we reconstruct Shiny Mobile. There is um, the the Shiny Mobile package, the R package itself, is built on the Framework Seven um, HTML template thing, um, which is like has HTML code and CSS and JavaScript and stuff. So stuff that is quite complementary to the kind of stuff that you'd find in a typical R package. Um, yes. Uh, so this, yeah. So framework seven, we talked about quite a bit last week. It's um, a, a framework for building mobile, well, not mobile native, but apps that look like the native um web applications um these things called progressive web applications um so the thing we're going to do first so we're going to use this tool sharp sharp pump which um you can get from github which um is there to um help kind of construct the skeleton of a html um template package um so if i this thing i'm gonna do is is load in that package then now the um uh framework seven itself has moved on quite a bit since um since this book was written um um yeah so we'll let current version is version 8.3 the book is using version 5.7 but we're going to work with the um provided it's still available we're going to try and work with the 5.7 version that they use in the book um so what does this tell us this function here get dependency assets tells us um what files we need to obtain uh we need to um bundle into the code that we deliver when a, a shiny app built on this thing is 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 delivered to a user so that can either come those these files, so like the um, JavaScript stuff and CSS stuff, can either be pulled from a content delivery network or can be bundled inside your R package and served along with the rest of your files. Um, get dependency assets is a function within SharpOnt, so um, it tells us, you know, 
This is where we'd obtain those files from and the specific files that we'd want to obtain. Um, we seem to have quite a few, a few fewer files than the book dealt with. Um, potentially because um, the some of these have been um, you know removed from the repository. Uh, okay, so the package which I've just opened on. So so this is a a package that exports a few things. Um, the files that we'll be looking at, including these bundled JavaScript files here and the bundled CSS files as well. Um, yes, so what we're going to do is um, make a package into which we add the various dependencies and, 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 and the rest of the skeleton. Um, so I, before starting the um, recording, I um, defined a package called Shiny Mobile in my um, temporary directory here. And that all the content in here aside from this uh, project file here, um, was added by using these two lines. So the path I just set to shiny mobile from inside the parent directory of this, and then I called create with this license MIT. So really all it does is the kind of stuff that use this does. Um, builds the skeleton of an R package and, and things like that, defines a license and whatnot. But it also adds in things like the JavaScript source directory. Um, it probably adds a few things into inst such like the um, um, the oh, my mouse goes all over the place. Yeah, so, um, right. What do we need to do then? So we've got the skeleton of our package. Um, and we are going to use this function, create dependency, to define, um, to, to generate a function that will append the framework seven dependencies to any user interface elements that we um, uh, want to add to a shiny app or, or whatever. Great dependency. So let's have a see where we are. Actually, I might. Right, just so that I can work out what's been added at each step. Right, so if I copy that in, create dependency on framework 7, and that should add in these bundled files somewhere. Ooh. Right, so... There used to be an argument bundle equals true. Presumably that's been removed. Um, almost everything now already is bundled. Um, so we'll rewrite that. Presumably I don't actually need to specify options. Then. Okay, so what have we added there? So we've added the JavaScript and the CSS, they are now in inst slash framework seven 
JavaScript bundle. Okay. Um, so that was quick. Um, so we've now got our um, our kind of front end dependencies bundled in our R package. Um, in order to use them, you use this function here at framework seven depths, which will um so for example if you if you define some HTML code using HTML tools or shiny or something like that, wrapping that um HTML code with this function. Uh, sorry, calling this function on that HTML code will append the uh, dependencies to the the, the, the thing. So anyway, um, so what has changed here? Oh, come on. Okay, so um, yes, so what that does is it generates that script uh, within the R directory um, here, and that defines which files you're going to bundle along with your um, code. Uh, you know, you're going to send over to the to the browser. The the framework itself can work in a few different ways. Um, hold on a second. Right, so you can, so there's different layouts possible on a mobile device anyway. So you can have a single page layout, a tab layout where there's like a kind of tabs button that you can expand to select which area of the app you need to work in um, and there's a kind of sidebar thing more similar to what you'd expect in a desktop um, application also the the they mentioned later on that framework 7 has a way of um, automatically configuring itself depending on what type of machine it's running on so it can detect whether it's running on ios or whether it's running on android or whether it's running on a desktop and um configure the display accordingly so um in the um in the example here we're going to do this single page layout, which is probably the simplest of the bunch. And we're given some HTML here. Now, how do we find what, how he knew that that was the appropriate HTML to use? So, um, looks so. Well, maybe I won't be able to see it too easily. Um, we'll just take it on kind of faith that this is the um, HTML skeleton for a um, framework seven But that's relatively unsurprising. So you've got the head element and you've got the body element within the body you need to load up the framework 7 bundle in order for it to be usable um the um the head tag contains meta tags um so these are things that will what do they indicate? They indicate stuff like the theming, 
whether presumably whether the app is usable on a specific device and um whether the the viewport the um so that kind of specifies how much of the screen you will be taking up when the app runs and this is like telling it to run with the full width of the device okay so there's some meta tags that you need to add in um the pwa features the progressive web app features which they hint to here we're going to talk about next week um but the most important stuff in here is these um the the bundled scripts weirdly those scripts are mentioned in the body in the um <laughs> in the template above and here they're in the head but anyway so what i'll do is i'll just start a kind of empty what would it be so an html oh, an html i think we'll just use a text file and i'll copy all that code in And I will copy in this header. So it's a head element. It was in here. All right. Um, so I've got here link. So these are links to the bundle, and these are telling it to run the scripts held therein. Maybe it is a slightly different thing, unless I've made a mistake there. Um, the body um in the body of of the html template you'd put um well a framework 7 kind of app has these elements present basically so you have um the page that kind of you know, your content that gets split up into further sections in the, in the next thing um and you have to have this app element this app id uh of attached to one of the the elements and that's like used by the the, the framework 7 scripts to you know reactively update things and whatnot. So we'll copy that into this skeleton too. Page. page element yeah so the the page element sorry there's a as an element with a class page and we have to add three components into that okay so the first one of them corresponds to this kind of title bar at the top here the second of them corresponds to this bottom element where you've got a few links and whatnot. So it's kind of for navigation within the app. And then the third is this kind of um, 
main content of the, the app. Okay, so we'll copy that in. Nearly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being quite uh, uh, unnecessarily kind of concerned about like alignment and stuff in something that really doesn't need us to worry about it. Um, so what's that? Wobble stuff. Okay, so, um, yeah, so you've got the, the top nav bar for like, you know, your title and whatnot, the bottom, um, the toolbar at the bottom that might contain links to different parts of the app and, and whatnot, and your um, actual content that, that gets displayed in between the two. So what's that? Although framework seven inserts JavaScript code at the end of the body, we could include them in the head as well. I don't know. So there's a function HTML to R in the um so HTML and if we pass in some um HTML text into that it will um convert it into R code for the same thing. Um, so, right, how are we going to do that then? So, tag list, tags dot head, tags dot previous code to R, and extract the F7 page function. So that would be if you look at the content here, view, view main, text all the div, app, text all the body. So we've got the body of the app here corresponds to this content here. Adding the dependencies, we'll add in the style sheets and, and whatnot using the paths that we have um, already kind of declared in our package. Um, some of the stuff has been removed for space reasons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this code and it will probably not quite work as perfectly as suggested in the book. Um, HTML to Let's see. Okay. Cool. So the stuff in there that we can remove. Well, really, we can just copy that into a function. So if I add a function called F7 page to the package. Mm -hmm. 
Seven school days and it would be full. Seven days. So, but that's not quite what it looks like in the um in the book. There's a couple of things missing. So we have to add the dependencies and we have to tell it that this div here sits inside the body element and that there's various content that goes in the head. So I'm wondering whether I possibly did I yeah, I did include that though, didn't I? HTML. Yeah, I included the head in the thing, but it didn't get kept by HTML to R. Um anyway, let's have a look here. That would be body time. A few additional things that we aren't covering at this stage mentioned in the, the code here. Um, that's what I had. I'll copy that in. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, so that should be add framework seven dependencies, shouldn't it? Uh, why does this work? Add dependencies depth equals framework seven. So presumably it knows to find the add framework seven depths function from here when this is called. I don't actually need these bits. These are for the next chapter. I need to define the body tag. Right, so, sorry, I know this is quite slow. Um, so it would be tags on the body wrapped around that. Okay. I think that should be right. That's a loose approximation to it. Now, um, so the point of this, what we're making is a function that we can um, that we can pass um, HTML strings into, and they'll get put into the page content of the app so anything that's in these dots here this list of elements here will get moved into here and you'll end up with um the the page content element will contain that stuff you can also provide in a nav bar and a toolbar element yourself so um so that should have ought to be in there as well Okay, so is that everything? Oh, I'm 
the drive. Wondering whether I've copied. Oh, maybe I've not copied everything. Anyway, um, so there's was it tax dollar div? Mm, yeah, sorry, I've, I've copied stuff in directly from HTML to Arthur, like to think thinking it would speed things up, but it's probably not. Um, I'll go back and change that to actually. I might as well just copy in what we've put in. Yeah, and um, copy in. The meta tags. Sorry about this. Watching people code can be one of the most boring things. Um, yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get rid of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, so, so ultimately, you can use HTML to R on an HTML string um uh, uh, and it will convert that string into the equivalent r code but any like hard coded values that you had in the html string will occur in that um that that r code as well and you, you know where parts of them are like things that you might want to configure f for your app you you want them to be passed in as arguments rather than hard-coded. Um, but with this stuff, so the navbar and toolbar and the title all get passed in and put in the appropriate place. The page content, which is passed in as the kind of expandable dots argument, um, get passed in. The metadata that's required for the app to run um, is, is added in here. And then there's a title for the app that you can passing as well as an argument um the navbar has this class of navbar so if you look in the skeleton um the, the class navbar has um a few different elements within it as well um and we can construct that and we can construct the toolbar element as well um might as well open into this oh no not there into here okay so we've got F7 navbar, F7 toolbar, you'd pass in arguments to this and they'd get added as well. So um, you'd also add in a title for the um, navigation bar. Right. So, um, so we've got that stuff um, and we can actually, hold on, just that we can load up. And oh, I see. Right. Um, um, Right. Um, hopefully, this will update everything. We're gonna, yeah. 
and make it possible to create elements of the different classes. Have bar um, and toolbar ones. Yeah, but we didn't do a great deal of work and we got the um, page element and the nav bar and the toolbar all defined now. Um, so you might then try and define a Shiny app to demonstrate how all this stuff works. Um, so if I take that and do inst, which one is it? Folder. Yeah, so I'd have to reload the app, run, and then source this. Now, what does that look like? It doesn't look like anything, really. If we load it in the browser as well, you can inspect it as well. We've got navbar and page content and things, but there's really nothing showing up at all. Um, and the reason for that is there's an awful lot of code in the JavaScript um for for the that 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 that's bundled in the JavaScript that kind of controls how the app is made um, interactive. And if you don't explain how to initialize the app, then it um, it then basically you end up with a blank app that displays no content um so what we have to do i think it's actually mentioned in the framework 7 notes um that you have to um have some code in there that initializes your app um okay so what we have to do um this again, create JS. Well, it's it's another one of the functions from that Charpent um, package. It adds a JavaScript file into um, source JS here, I think. So if we do, oh, we'll turn off the shiny thing. Create JS. Oh, hold on. Um, and then create JS in it. Is it in it dot JS now? Yeah, and that will add in it dot JS into the source folder. So in here, along with a couple of other things as well. Um, yeah, if you look at the initialization thing, this is basically what you have to add to your app to make it visible and interactable and, and what um so we create a framework seven object um the, the the purpose of this code here is to ensure that 
we're not creating that object before the scripts and things are loaded into the browser. Um, because, you know, if you attempt to make an object using a function that doesn't exist, it's not going to be very happy. So the dollar document thing waits for the doc, sorry, the dollar document dot ready just waits for the, um, the, the, you know, the, the kind of static files and stuff to be passed over to the browser before it, um, it waits for the app to be in a ready state before it, before anything is done. Um, right. So if I add that into there, yes. So what does this mean? App. Usually when you're like writing JavaScript, you'd use, um, let or const or something to define the scope of a, a variable here they aren't using that and as such this gets added as a kind of global element which means that when you're if you access the if you go into the console in your dev tools you, you should be able to access the app element itself um Da, 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 da. Most of the code is wrapped in function that waits. Yeah, so that's it. It waits until the DOM's ready before running. Um, yeah, so that da, 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 creates the app instance that you need. And that means that you can then use the methods that Framework 7 provides in the code that you've bundled up in this package. Um, So how do we do this? Main view equals the next step consists of initializing the main view. And we had this, oh, we had this directly after app creation. So that would be like that, I guess. Okay. And then once done, we compress the corresponding JS file to create shiny mobile.min.js. Oh, what's the new dependency though? The new dependency is shiny mobile. Okay, right. Um, so if we do this, Hopefully, so that has added shiny mobile dependencies, add shiny mobile depths. So that's the, the script we've just written has been bundled up into this file here. Um, and I mean, it's pretty hard to understand it, but um what's it in inst it'll be in dist one uh no maybe not um i don't know how how audible the screaming that's going on downstairs is but it, it's pretty audible in the office for me at the moment um uh it, it could be any injustice that has tri triggered that uh, my, my, my four-year-old. Um, oh. It's nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Right. I can't hear it on my end. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, okay. So what have we done here? We have called build JS that has updated a file somewhere in here in inst shiny mobile slash js was created it's added this dependencies file which means that we have a dependencies function that we can use to uh, use when we um uh call the you know when a, a framework 7 page is created the all the dependencies for 
further framework seven elements will be included with it if we modify these this line in the um f7 page function which is this here so we've got all the meta things and we can change that to c right that's add dependencies blah, 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 blah. okay right so let's try that Oop. um right um and with that Working app is shown in figure 23.3. It might be kind of underwhelming, but we can try it anyway. Uh, which one was it? It was this one here. Oh, dear. Let's try it in the browser. I'm still not getting anything. What haven't I done? Um, if we look at the code for that. It would be shinymobile.r and there was um was a source JS for oy, 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 oy. Well this could be quite hard to find. Thing isn't working anymore. Maybe that goes after. Um, what was it? Build Jazz. No, oh, error. Was permission denied? No. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Right. Mm -hmm. Weird going on here. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'll just talk through the rest. Um, right, so um, so what we should have got there was all our dependencies in one place, the ones that we've defined in our package using bespoke code and the ones that um, are dependent on the where we've bundled in the Framework 7 code. Um, that should give us uh, an app that looks like this, where there's, you've got the title thing, the navbar thing, and the to toolbar thing at the bottom, and you've got a bit of code in the middle. Um, with that, you can add um, the following code to the init.js thing, and it will, like, when your app loads up, it will display a notification to you. Um, Yeah. Um, so, so a lot of the code involved seems to um, we seem to be writing more JavaScript in this chapter than um, we we have in in previous chapters. 
Um, yeah, we'll talk about the main kind of widgets that are available in Framework Seven in a, a, a in two weeks' time. Um, yeah, there's lots of things that you can do with that app object that we defined. Um, you can do things like setting the theme for the app um, and to tell us what we do. Yeah, that would be app.theme to modify the thing. But um, typically that the parameter for, for the theme would be auto, which would mean that your app can detect whether it's running on one device or another and change the layout accordingly. Um, you can um, you can add events that will run when the app, you know, in response to, sorry, you can add things that will run in response to particular events. So things like resizing of the window, um, whether you're on or offline, um, which helps with, you know, um, the, you know, potentially, potentially these apps are going to um, fall out of, um, you, you know, if you're going from a place with high network coverage to, you know, if you're going into a train tunnel or something like that. Um, anyway, so, so it's possible to define how the app should behave um, in those settings. One thing that I'm struggling to follow in the chapter, though, is um, how I actually write how I write a package that can then be used in a shiny app, defining a separate package where I can I can I then if I if I'm adding things to to my version of shiny mobile that will run on initialization of the app how do I make sure that when I'm developing shiny app one it has one title it has you know it has one name whereas when I'm developing shiny app 2 it has another i don't want to have to write all this kind of um th this kind of boilerplate in each mobile shiny app that i develop um quite how i kind of inject those values into these scripts that I'm, I'm not quite sure at, at, at present um but it, it will almost certainly be possible i just haven't found the right bit of the 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 chapter or the documentation to do it um yes um yeah i'll leave it at that because we've done it for an hour but um yeah so basically uh what's it did what's what's it shown us um we started with some html code for a framework 7 skeleton and then converted that into our code added that to an R package. We have, um, we, we spotted that creating a shiny app using just the HTML elements isn't sufficient to create a working um, mobile app uh, you, you, with, with framework seven at least. And that there's this additional step where you initialize an app that um, using this j kind of JavaScript initialization code um, that, that needs to be done. I didn't quite work out how to get that to actually work in, in you know, in, in in a real setting. But um, yeah, uh, the, the rest of the chapter is more kind of like about, you know, configuring things, getting the themes to look right and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, yeah, there's, I mean, there's lots to kind of, um, look into. I'm going to experiment with it and see if I can get it to actually work because it's, 
always a bit frustrating when you might try and follow examples and they don't actually work in your hands. Anyway, I don't know. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, it's, I don't know, uh, um, maybe it was a bit slow, the presentation, but um, so next week we're doing chapter 24, which is about um, some of the things that Shiny Mobile, the, the Shiny Mobile package itself provides that are, that are features you'd expect in a progressive web app. Um, so presumably it'll cover things like how you make your apps installable, um, how you make your apps um, uh, robust to the changing environment that the, the mobile devices find themselves in and things. Um, yeah, cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, I only really got halfway into the chapter. So, um, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, thanks for coming along, Trevin. Um, yeah, thank, thank you, Russ. Yeah, no problem. So you're talking next week on, um, the progressive web apps chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. That's, that's the plan. Good stuff. Right. Well, I will see you then. Um, okay. Good All to right. see you. Take care. Bye.